All right, what were you saying, guys? Today, we're going to be going over the deep squat benefits, how we can regress, how we can get started, complementary exercises, everything you need to know. We're going through it right here. So, why don't we deep squat? There was a study in 1961 that came out and said deep squatting is bad for your knees. However, everyone took this was like, oh, there's a study that says that. And although there was an unvalidated measuring device used that was actually created by the author of the study. So, technically, it wasn't actually true and the results were bad so and also another study that came out later said there's more pressure in your knee when you get goes over your toe and everyone just went oh knees over toes bad for you so it's like these studies that came out aren't necessarily the best in the world that's why it, like everyone always comes to me and goes oh what research for that what research for this i'm like what results mate what results um so yeah and then obviously power lift lifting became like the big um one of the biggest sports for weightlifting in america um and they all squat to 90 degrees if you squat to 90 degrees you get a pass um which obviously isn't the best thing in the world um so now everyone goes in the gym and squats like that also like when i first started squatting i just thought that's that that is how you squat and i, I saw people doing the deep squats and i was like oh that's just because i got be better mobility and stuff like that which it is but everyone can get started and i'll show you in this video um so yeah so the nose and knees over toes the study in 1961 and the powerlifting is like the big reason why we don't deep squat. And obviously this had a massive setback for knees. Um, I think that the knee um, pain, knee, knee replacements, knee surgeries are all just rising constant consistently. And it's because of this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah. And it's been shown that it's not because of like people getting fat and stuff like that. That's probably adding to a little bit, but like at the heart of it, it's something wrong with elsewhere, not just the, the weight it could be also like everyone's getting in loads of steps forward um we just get as many steps forward backwards mate so yeah so george hackenschmidt i'll move my face out of the way because you can see him jumping here what an absolute donny um look at him he's what like i think in this video uh, photo he's like 74 but he's jumping over chairs he's loving life and he is one of the he's one of the people that love 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 deep squat and if you've ever heard the hack squat they've actually changed hack squat if you go into a gym, you're like, oh, this is a hack squat, and people don't go down to 90. It's like one of those machine things. Like, this is a proper hack squat where you've got weight behind your back, your knees are going all the way forward, and you're getting a full range of motion. And this was his favorite exercise, as you can see here, his favorite exercise. Um, and this is actually the real hack squat. So, yeah, he this was his favorite exercise, and he's one of the craziest longevity cases for jumping for healthy knees. So we need to take something from this. We need to deep squat. We need to go in this position where we've got our knees so far over our toes. We need to get strong here, not avoid it. Obviously, if there's pain in these positions, regress to a point where you are pain-free and then build up. Don't go straight into these. But over time, we want to get to the point where we can do these things. Like we can do sissy squats like Ben. We can do reverse Nordics. We want to be able to have strong knees. So, yeah. And the benefits of deep squatting, the first is it provides nutrients to the entire knee. So when you're deep squatting, synovial fluid is produced around the knee, it has healing effects, also strengthening effects of the connective tissue. There's a study that Ben loves to talk about. I don't actually know the quote off by heart, but oh, I should know it, and I probably would if I rehearsed it, but it's, it's basically saying that it took loads and loads of studies and it basically looked at all of them and found that deep squatting was an effective exercise when form coached and progressively loaded over time. Um, so, yeah, it also preferentially trains the VMOs in the bottom quarter of a squat. So everyone says, oh, you can't actually preferentially train the VMOs, but it's shown that you, you can. Um, not necessarily taking out the other quads completely, like you can't just train one quad, but you can preferentially train it. If, you, if you've done like a set of body weight A to G split squats for like 25 reps, you can feel your bloody VMOs, I tell you that. Um, so yeah, those are the key benefits. Obviously, VMOs are really, really important for knee health. Improves patella tracking is the primary player for protecting knee cartilage. So building strong VMOs is going to be really key. And also, there was a study that came out and said when people are walking forward, their quads don't activate in the same way as when they're walking backwards, and that causes knee pain as well. So walking backwards is the first step. Um, so, yeah, cool. And then the limitations that might not allow you to get into the deep squat is ankle mobility and also just your knee strength. So the first one, ankle mobility, can be sorted out with some kind of heel elevation. 
I personally think everyone can get into a deep squat. Their leverages might be different. A taller person might be more leaning forward. A smaller person might be more leaning more upright. But everyone can possibly get into it, and it's going to be beneficial for their knees. Use a slant board. Use this kind of stuff. And then the other limitation is is knee strength. So with this, you can regress the type of squats. So obviously, like you saw with that George Hackenschmidt, the hack squat, his knees are going to be super, 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 super far forward, and that's going to be a really, really hard version of a squat. And then you've got something like a slant board squat where your heels are really elevated. That's, again, going to be more knee dominant. And then you go down to something like an ACG buddy squat where your heels are just elevated or on plates or something like that. And then it's not as knee dominant. It's still still very good for your knees. Um, and then also using assistance of the body weight. So if your knees can't handle any of these positions, just using um, assistance of your body weight to be able to get into that bottom position, taking all of your body weight off, if that's if that's what it takes. Um, I remember that's what it used to take for me. I used to, also another thing that you can do if you're struggling with these bottom positions is, is floss bands. So you can wrap some floss bands around your knee, um, get into these deep ranges of motion, maybe do a couple of pulses in the bottom. And then when you take it off, you get loads of blood flow in the knee and you should be able to start feeling better after that. But those are just a few ways you can regress it. Um, the, the the assistance of the body weight is going to be key. Like when I had my quad tendonitis flare up, um, I was using assisted assisted squats and they were amazing for, for my quad tendon. So yeah, some complementary exercises for the ATG squat to get it better are going to be step up and split squat warm up. So the step up is a short range exercise and the ATG split squat is a long range exercise. And when you combine combine these before the squat it's amazing it's not it's the best warm-up obviously you're going to be having more ankle mobility when you are going down into those so when you go down into the deep squat you're going to be able to get in there easier but also just the muscle that's activating obviously it's short range going to get loads of blood flow in the knee and then long range um it's going to be allowing you to get into these deep ranges of motion and then so those are a warm-up obviously the split squat can be done after as well and just go heavy on that and that's going to increase your, your squat um weight you can do on a squat as well. And then see good morning, absolutely key. Lengthening the glutes, lengthening the hamstrings, gonna be getting deeper in the squat, can help avoid the butt wink, you know, when you get down on the bottom, if you got lengthened glutes, um, and a sh and even if you get stronger in a seated good morning, this is gonna translate heavily to a back squat. You get stronger seated good morning, you're gonna have a strong squat. Um, so yeah, your torso is real. oh, sorry about that your torso is really close um, to your to your hips and your knees here. Um, so it's just going to be amazing for all types of lifts. You get your, like, I think Charles Poliquin or might be Louis Simmons, someone said, you build a strong back, you're a strong person, something like that. Um, so all else fails, build a strong low back and your all your lifts are going to go up. So yeah, that is my guide for deep squatting. Obviously, I can go deeper on certain things if people want it. Just thought I'd make a quick video breaking it all down, helping you get into regress versions because I know not everyone can get right into uh, the hack squat straight away. Um, so, yeah, I hope it helps. I also have a free five-day workshop coming up, uh, I think, second week of February. It should be about the fifth. Um, so the link for that will be down in the description. If you just click on that, I'll let you in a couple days before the workshop starts. It's going to be held on school, so you can download the school app. And it's going to pretty much give you all the information you need on how to get out of knee pain, the nutrition side, the recovery, my story. We might have a little guest as well. Um, so, yeah, it's going to, by the end of it, you're going to know how to fix your knees. So amazing. And, yeah, also leave video suggestions down in the comments what you want to see. And I'll be able to get to those. If you're struggling with anything in training, um, just, just drop it down in the comments. I'll either answer in the comments or I'll make a whole video on it if I need to. So, yeah, awesome. Thanks for watching.